In our recent live mini workshop, one of the graph examples that we shared was the waterfall chart. And during and after that session, we received a number of questions on how we made that particular chart type. So we prepared this video to show you that process. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to check out the other content that we have available including tips, tricks and tutorials, and data visualization makeovers. A waterfall chart is a specific type of bar chart that reveals the story behind the net change in something's value. So let's take a look now at the example we shared during that recent live event. The waterfall chart gets its name from its shape. As we can see here, the first bar typically starts from a baseline of zero and represents the initial quantity of the measure in question. In this case, headcount at the beginning of the year. Then follow a series of smaller bars, starting with additions to that starting headcount, hires, promotions, transfers in, followed by those deductions, the transfers out and the exit. This leads to one final bar representing our end of year headcount. This waterfall chart does a good job of showing the complexity that can be sometimes hidden in our aggregated numbers. For example, if we were to look purely at the start and end headcount, a difference of 19 might not provide an interesting story. Whereas with this view, we can see that transfers out were more than double transfers in, which may well need to be highlighted. That's enough of the theory. Let's dive into Excel now and create one. Now, in earlier versions of Excel, waterfalls weren't directly available out of the box. So a little bit of creativity was needed to build one. A common approach was to use a stacked bar and then turning the stacks that supported those component parts invisible to give that floating appearance. Now, in later versions of Excel, waterfall charts are directly available. But having said that, there are a number of steps that we should be looking to take to turn from the default output that we get into the example that we saw earlier. We have our data here showing the order of progression in descending order from the initial headcount at the top all the way down to the final headcount at the bottom. And for each of these categories, we have the number of sales managers. You'll see for the deductions that we've entered these as negative numbers. They're going to represent those reductions that we see in our waterfall. To create our waterfall, select the data, insert. On our chart types, we can scroll across to the waterfall and select waterfall chart. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Now this doesn't look too bad. You'll notice though that our final bar is looking a little bit strange. Let's fix that now. So select the bar, wait a second or two, and then click again. Right click and select format data point. And under the graph icon, we can select set as total. And while we're doing this, we can do that with the original headcount bar as well. So this essentially is our waterfall chart, but I'm gonna make a number of formatting changes now to transform this output into our finished version. First of all, I'm going to remove some of the chart elements. I'm gonna start by removing the chart border, clicking on chart, right click, format chart area. And within the paint bucket tool, I can select border and no line. I'm going to remove my grid lines as well by clicking on the grid lines and hitting the delete key. And I'm also going to remove my y-axis. If you recall back to the original version, we had each bar directly labeled. I'm going to remove my legend and also for the time being the chart title. So we can put one back a little bit later on. For the time being, I'm going to remove the data labels. And I also don't really like these connecting lines. So we can remove those by clicking on a bar, selecting format data series, and then unselecting the show connector lines option. Now I've got a cleaner looking view, I'm going to revise some of the existing elements that we have here, starting off with the X axis. Let's select that, change the font, make it slightly bigger, and also choose a more neutral color gray. And while I'm in my axis settings, I'm going to add tick marks to the outside and just reduce the width between the bars now to 0.4. I now want to revise the colors of these bars to match what we had originally. So I can do that by selecting a bar and just clicking again to make sure we only select that one bar. And now I can choose the fill options and pick the darker blue. I can do the same for the end bars. And then for those bars that are increasing, I can select a lighter blue. And finally, for the decreasing elements, choose a slightly deeper orange color. 
Finally, let's finish this off by adding our chart title and placing that appropriately. And now we have this clean looking view after removing and revising some of our elements, we are able to introduce a couple more back onto our view. First of all, let's add those data labels back on. To do this, we can right click on a bar and select add data labels. You will see that's added data labels for each of the bars. Let's make those a little bit bigger to start off with. Now we've resized these data labels, we get a better sense that the orange bars are showing the negative value. Now this makes sense, of course, because it's the data that we have plotted, but we want to show these as a positive figure. To change this, we can look at the format of these labels. Right click on the label, select format data labels. First thing to do is expand the number format option, and instead of general, click number. Let's reduce the decimal places to zero. And then the next thing we're gonna do is change the format code. This will allow us to tell Excel in how to treat those negative numbers. So to do this, let's first of all copy the format code that we currently have in this window. Now, what I'm gonna do is add a semicolon. Now, anything after this is our way of telling Excel how to deal with these negative numbers. So if I just paste the same format elements in there, this will give us the view we're looking for. And if I click off, you'll see these numbers have returned to positive values. Last thing to do now is just place these labels where we want them. If you recall the original, we had the component elements having the label in the middle, whereas the beginning and end headcount had the labels inside the bars, but closer to the top. So let's make those changes now. If we click on the labels and click format data labels, we can move those positions to the center. And then for these component elements, we can change these to inside end. And the final step here is to make our labels white. I did just want to make one further differentiation on the X axis, and that's to bring back those subcategories, if you like, that showed the additions and the deductions with those cleverly placed lines. So let's do that now by leveraging some text boxes and additional lines. And there we have it, our final waterfall chart. While waterfalls do have some challenges, for more on those, check out this article in our Storytelling with Data chart guide. In this particular use case, where we were looking to explain the detail behind the change in that opening headcount at the beginning of the year and that end headcount at the end of the year, the waterfall chart proved extremely useful. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you'd like to see an example of how this particular waterfall chart is presented, then I'd recommend you check out our recent mini workshop. I'll add a link to that right here. The story starts at around about 25 minutes in, but I'd highly encourage you to watch the whole thing because it's jam packed full of tips and strategies on how to transform your graphs from good to great. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.